Well, running this channel, I find I've got some really interesting viewers, and some of them seem to want to look after me. When my MOT was due, a number got in touch to remind me. Well, thank you for that. Then when it was MOT'd, a number of viewers looked at the advisories and got in touch again. And that has caused a really sharp rise in comments, mainly from those who, shall we say, are not so keen on EVs anyway. So what's the excitement? I've had my Tesla Model S since March 2020, just as we entered the lockdowns. And every year I have it MOT'd and that data is public information. It shows the make and model, registration number and the mileage. Then it shows pass or fail and finally any items it has failed on and any advisories for items that are actually legal but will need attention in the near future. My first MOT was a clean pass, no advisories, as were my second and third. And this was a first for me. I've never before had three MOTs pass with no work and no advisories in over 40 years of motoring. I was happy. My recent MOT was different. It passed, but it had three advisories. Three tyres were still legal, but reported as being close to the legal limit. Now, obviously I'm aware of this. I do check my tyres, wipers and screen wash on a regular basis. My keen viewer asked me how many tyres I bought and how much did they cost? Well, it's not a trade secret. Anyone can go on the Tesla website and find out what wheels are fitted to my car. Likewise, anyone can look up suitable tyres on sites such as Quick Fit or National Tyres, etc. So I advised him that I decided to swap all four tyres at once, even the one that didn't really need changing. And I chose Pirelli P0s, which cost me around £200 each, fitted and balanced. Well, wow! Did that spark a reaction from the anti-EV brigade? £200 for an EV tyre? How utterly ridiculous was the general trend, with some advising me that their ice car tyres cost them 50 quid. And I do know that is probably true. See, my wife has a Kia Rio, little petrol car, and the new tyres for that do cost me around 60 quid. And I suspect some of the EV haters have things like older Vauxhall Corsas or Ford Fiestas and choose to stick on really budget or part-worn tyres and pay less. But the general trend was to use that as an excuse not to buy an EV. So are EV tyres really that ridiculous? Now I love maths. It's something of a hobby of mine, particularly mental arithmetic. I'm always calculating things in my mind. So the first thing I thought of when I decided to look at this was the size difference. Was my Model S with its 245 by 45 R19 tyres that much bigger than my wife's 185 by 65 R14s? Now the circumference of a circle is 2 times pi times R, where R is the radius. I remember that from my school days. See, some things you learn at school are actually useful in real life later on. And that calculation gave me my first shock. The Rio 14-inch diameter wheels have a circumference of 43 inches, and my 19-inch wheels have 59-inch circumferences. My tyre is nearly 5 foot around. I'd never have guessed that. So my Tesla wheel is definitely bigger. But now I have to look at the width of the tyre. My tyres are very much wider to see how much rubber it takes, assuming the thickness remains fairly similar. My wife's Rio is 185mm wide or 7.28 inches, while mine are 245mm wide or 9.65 inches. So my wife's tyre has an area of 43 times 7.28 inches, which equals 313 square inches. Mine has 530 square inches. Wow, that was a surprise. So my first answer is yeah, my tyre is significantly bigger and has significantly more material than the Rio. So it should, therefore should be dearer. Well, next I looked at non-EVs with similar sized tyres. Are they the same price or do EV tyres cost more size for size? Well, I looked at a variety, some slightly smaller and others comparable cars. 
Things like BMW 5 Series has more than one model, with 245-45R19s identical to mine. Mercedes C-Class has 245-45R18s. GLA has 235-45R19s. Audi A4 245-40R19s. The tyres fitted to my Model S are typical of many other performance ICE cars on the road today. Nothing unusual. And a quick look at Porsche, and that revealed they too use very similar sizes. So my tyre is really quite common. Now, I'm always told that my car needs heavy-duty tyres because of the weight of the batteries. And I did indeed buy reinforced tyres, as recommended by Tesla. But so do Mercedes and BMW and Porsche, all of them non-EVs. It seems if you have a performance car, you need upgraded load capacity. Maybe it's because we hurtle around bends at breakneck speeds. Again, this was not unique to EVs. So at this point, a question arose. Is my car actually that much heavier? So a quick check revealed that my Model S weighs in at around about 2,070 kilograms. Looking at the Mercedes E-Class, that weighs, depending on the model, between 1725 and 2100 kilograms. The BMW 5 Series, between 1665 and 2075. Audi A6, between 1635 and 2075. There's not that much in it. If you compare the BMW 5 Series with a Tesla Model 3 Performance, much more like-for-like -like comparison, the M3 weighs in at 1847, that's nearly 200 kilograms less than an equivalent, non-M, BMW at 2035. Well, there goes yet another myth busted. My car is exactly in the weight, weight range of comparable ICE models. Well, back to tyres, and I learned an unusual thing that my, my tyre fitter of 20 years experience told me while he was fitting my tyres. Porsche and Mercedes have specified tyres suitable for their models. Porsche, in particular, frown very heavily at fitting anything else. Not quite invalidating the warranty, but definitely not acceptable. So, back to the tyre prices. Yes, my wife's Rio is available as a budget tyre at just over £60, up to a premium brand at over £100, both fitted and balanced. My tyres also have budget and premium. Budget for me begins at about 150 and goes up to above 250. So why did I choose Pirelli P0 tyres? OK, first thing, they were the original tyres fitted from new. Now then, I do a lot of miles. This last 12 months I've done something around about 13, 14,000 miles. I have a premium car and regard my safety as more important than saving a few pounds. Plus, the P0 produce a quiet model. Now, an average tyre has a decibel rating of anything up to 72 decibels, while well, my choice is rated at 68 decibels. Now, if you know anything about sound, well, good on you, because I don't really. It is amazingly complicated. There's outright loudness, loudness and perceived loudness. So my two key reasons for my choice was one, I have a very quiet car, really quiet, and I would like to keep it that way. I do not want road noise. Number two, according to International Noise Awareness Day, yeah, there is such a thing, established in 1996, it reports continued exposure to noise levels over 70 dBA will cause hearing loss. <laughs> wow! I just wonder if some of the cars that pass me on the motorway I can hear them loud as anything, exhaust blurring, droning continuously. wonder how their hearing is. Well, probably much worse by having to turn their stereo up really high to cover it up. So fact one, my tyres are no dearer, brand for brand, than any other comparable high-performance ice car. We just pay more, but then we paid more for our cars in the first place. Fact two, Tesla does not tell me what tyre to fit, that's my choice. I could even fit budget if I wanted to. So they are significantly cheaper than buying the manufacturer recommended tyres for the likes of BMW, Mercedes, Maserati, Audi and Porsche. These topped out at over £240 each, £40 a tyre dearer than I paid. 
Now, one final note. I recently took an Uber to the airport and chatted with the driver on the way. He told me his wife leased a Mercedes A-Class AMG Performance petrol model. As part of the lease, it must be serviced in accordance with the manufacturer's recommendation. Her first service, mini service, cost her just over £200. And the full service was nearly £600. And that was in the first year. I did check the Mercedes website and these appear to be quite accurate. I've also just checked my servicing cost over the last three and a half years and over 50,000 miles. And the grand total is, well, none at all. Nothing. My car has never been serviced. There is no service schedule with Tesla. I did spend £87 on four wiper blades and three bottles of concentrated screen wash, which would not be included in servicing anyhow, anyway. Plus I paid a total of six tyres, costing around £1,200, also not included on the service. That's it. Servicing nil, repairs nil. And now I've replaced the tyres, I once again have no advisories on my MOT. I'm happy and I'm Dave. <laughs>